Welcome to Talk of the Twin Cities. My name is Carla Berlin, and we have with us today Gail B, known as the Bead Lady. Mm -hmm. Last month we um, learned more about what she's been doing with Lady Gaga, as well as two of her um, world-renowned dresses, um, the, both Fantasy and Eden. And we're going to learn more about that today. But first of all, Gail, mm -hmm. tell us about your history and background. Um, my history was is that I wanted to get a pair of earrings and they were $36 and I was in college and that was so much money that I said, hey, they're teaching beading classes. There were four classes. Um, I had published a manuscript and then they went ahead and gave me it as a class at the party. After that, I never had any more any more training. And what that is when beaters, when they, to become a really good beater, it's practice and all you do is bead and bead and bead and bead pretty much things are self-taught um, I've gotten magazines from the very first issue for tw over t going on 20 some five some years all the way through and I can't read patterns so when people say that I look at the pictures I literally look at the pictures I don't know how to I don't know how to read them so it's been most everybody that becomes good at beating is self-taught and myself is I just started beating. Well and one thing that you were sharing with me before the show that you tie this in that's very interesting about Gail is that she was a, a world-class power lifter right? No I was a state and regional champion I trained with world world champions and and what that did was it shows me the dedication. If you're going to be in the Olympics, which basically the powerlifting national world class means the whole world, is that um, you have to breathe it, live it, think it. Every part of your being while you're competing is doing that kind of training. It's not just physical, it's mental. And so for me, from working with them, if I want to be like that, it was practice, get to your weightlifting, this is practice, get to your beating. I bead even more than I lifted, but I learned that principle of if you want to be in the Olympics, then train like the Olympics. And for me, I feel like I'm in the arena now. I am not close to being in the race, but I am in the arena. And I all my hard work and all these years of, of making things, knowing that they were going to go in museums, but no museums knows me, but I just kept uh, now and I'm ready. Yeah. Well, and it wasn't smooth sailing. You've had some physical hardships. Mm -hmm. Tell us on about some of those and how you that you still kept focused on your dream. Um, I had from powerlifting. Um, I had collapsed my thumb and had it completely built in 1998, and I was in this position for three and a half years, and um, I quit beating during that time. And then in 96, 97. 1997 and 98, I had two corneal transplants. Then I had a LASIK surgery from a doctor in Canada. And overnight from having eyes that were so bad that I couldn't even see the E on a chart. And I hadn't been able to bead during that whole time because I couldn't see the hole in the bead. Um, I went in and had 20-20 vision after four and a half years of not being able to see. And the point of that is, and, and I like to make clear is, if, if it's your dream, don't lose the dream. Don't lose it um, through your hands, through your, through whatever hardships you have, continue to keep your dream. And I call it putting it on the back burner. It doesn't mean that I'm not going to do it, but everything is because of timing. And don't lose your faith of it. And you're not too old to ever try to do something. And everything of that now has led to where I am right now. What does it feel like after you've completed one of these amazing creations? Especially the dress. I feel like Noah and <laughs> being told to get in, go build the ark. And there's no floods coming. There's no rains coming. There isn't. And you, I just kept making this dress. And people would constantly say, but what are you going to do with it? Always my answer is, I'm building it for Hollywood. And that's all I said, all I said, all I said every time, instead of people snickering or going like, oh, this woman's mental and she's gonna do this. So finally when the rains came and the floods came, which is all the uh, public relations just in the, the Twin Cities, going into mail.com, going into Lady Gaga, going into um, just getting done with um, 
Good Morning America and, and Today Show. And so part of this is very excited, but it started with believing and, and believing your dream and going fearless. I mean, for myself is, and because I don't draw, and because I don't sketch, and because I don't do patterns, and I don't sew, um, proves that I'm definitely spiritually gifted. After the transplants, my whole technique changed, and then everything just kept snowballing into bigger, bigger, bigger. Where do you get your beads? I travel all over the world to get my beads, um, and also I go there to find out what's the techniques that they use. If I have the Venetian beads, they've been doing it over 800 years. If you go to Austria and you go to the Swarovski, they've been doing it 115 years. You go to Preciosa in, in uh, the Czech Republic, and they've been doing it 100 years, even before Swarovski. So all the different countries that I've gone to, I collect what's the specialty of their country. Uh -huh. And I also go into the factories and find out how do they make them. My thing is the history of beads in my dresses, nothing's ever been worn. So when you ask, how do you know mm -hmm. that this is vintage to people? It's the packages that they come into. And you usually have to prove this, especially with museums, these packages would have been made prior to the war in 1930s probably and these beads would have been made after the war and you can see the difference on the packages ks means they're the oldest beads um, then when it's ds and uh, would be daniel sarosky and company then they both have the edelweiss which was the um, logo all the vintage beads that are here are unwrapped and all the packages from the 1950s. So I know how long that is ago. And I mix now modern with the vintage and I do glass, I do stones, I do everything, but the key is to make them new so there's nobody else's energy in it. How do you know you're the only one in the world that's doing, doing this? this? Yeah, because yeah. I claim that I'm doing this is yeah. that, um, I have my the book here, but Diana Friedberg, uh, traveled to over 40 countries and interviewed 50 locations and she interviewed over 10 years thousands of people and she has a documentary series that she did on World on a String and this shows all the different countries even what I do to go get my beads hers is so much more in depth and she traveled and she's the one that contacted me because in her series she wants to show what is the uniqueness of each creation? And I feel so blessed to be part of it because the people that are doing this stuff is amazing and they are the only peeps, pe people in the world. She is the world expert about beads and to be part of this, we've gone our journeys together for many years and it's just really exciting to see like her manifesting the book and the docu-series and me um, being able to beat and we kind of just fed off of each other well, and yeah. in, in addition to, you know, her being amazing and an expert, so are you. Would you mind sharing a little bit more about the process? I like to be in touch with the beads. I mean, literally, my bead room is filled with hundreds of thousands, and then the warehouse is filled with into the hundreds, if not a million beads. And what I do is even the beads on this, I divide things into color when I'm working. Now, I've taken them all out of the cases, and I make them all a rainbow. And you go, Gail, it's already divided. Why are you throwing them all together? And that's so that I can touch each bead and reacquaint it. This is like meeting my beads again. And as I touch them, I go into a color palette, much like an artist would for painting. And then this is my palette. And then once I start, I already have in mind exactly what the beads are. And once I start beading, I bead like this. And I bead all night. I bead with no people. Even though I have my studio, I will go in in the early evening, later evening, and go in and see what they did for the day. And then I go home and bead by myself at night. Well, we're out of time, but if someone is watching this and they want to contact you or lear, uh, learn more information, yes. um, they can go to your website, correct? Yes. Which is on the screen. And, and Gail, we are so grateful you were able to be here with us today. Thank you. And also, too, so I can just add, if people have really big things that they want, go to Look LA and go to my agent, and they will, because um, they're the ones that do all the contacting work for me. Oh, yes. okay, great. So that'd be great. Look yeah. LA, and then, of course, your website as well. Well, mm -hmm. thanks again for being here. It's always a pleasure yeah, to have you, you on the show. Again, my name is Carla Berlin, along with Gail B.